Are you ready to dive into some cool stuff about a famous old movie? We've got interesting facts and stories to share that you might not know. One thing people often wonder is which old-timey actor from this movie do you like the most? And hey, do you know any cool stories or secrets about how this movie was made? Share your own memories or experiences with us in the comments below. Let's explore together the making of this special film and how it affected movie history. Stay tuned for more cool stuff from behind the scenes. For Whom the Bell Tolls, released in 1943, is a classic film adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's novel. The movie boasts a busy cast, with Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman in leading roles. Directed by Sam Wood, the film garnered critical acclaim but faced stiff competition at the awards from other productions like Casablanca. The standout performance in For Whom the Bell Tolls comes from the actress who portrayed Pillar, bringing depth and humanity to her role. Despite limited screen time, she leaves a lasting impression. In contrast, Ingrid Bergman's portrayal receives mixed reviews, with some finding her performance flat and unconvincing. The narrative unfolds against the backdrop of the Spanish Civil War, with themes of loyalty, betrayal, and the human cost of conflict. While the pacing may be slow for some viewers, the final act delivers the anticipated action. Despite its accolades, for whom the bell tolls remains overshadowed by other works in the careers of its cast and crew. However, it stands as a faithful adaptation of Hemingway's celebrated novel, offering viewers a glimpse into the complexities of war and human relationships. Early in pre-production, Paulette Goddard was tested for the role of Maria. Alexander Granach, who came via Vienna to Berlin in 96, worked as a baker before joining the Yiddish theater to gain acting experience. Yvonne De Carlo resided in a vast estate on Coldwater Canyon Drive in Studio City from 1950 to 1975. The estate boasted 11 rooms, a remodeled English-style kitchen, stables, and a large waterfall swimming pool. Financial constraints post-divorce led to the sale of the property in 1975. Ingrid Bergman, known for her timeless talent, has left a lasting legacy. Her name lives on not just in film history, but also in nature with a rose named in her honor. Additionally, she played a significant role in the inaugural Montreal World Film Festival in 1977, marking the festival's non-competitive beginning. It was a momentous occasion attended by luminaries like Fay Ray, Gloria Swanson, Howard Hawks, and John Luke Goddard. Notably, for whom the bell tolls marked Bergman's debut in color film, adding another dimension to her illustrious career. Ingrid Bergman, known for her role in Casablanca, took a significant pay cut to appear in the 1942 film. David O. Selznick offered her the role without giving her the option to refuse. Meanwhile, Katina Paxanu won both the Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress for her debut in theatrical films, a feat achieved in For Whom the Bell Tolls. Additionally, Ingrid Bergman became the first Swedish actress nominated for a Golden Globe Award. Others who followed suit include Anita Ekberg, Lena Olin, Anne Margaret, Rebecca Ferguson, and Alicia Vikander. Ingrid Bergman, known for her role in the 1943 film, had a Ferrari named after her by Sergio Scaglietti. Gary Cooper, another actor from the movie, had mixed feelings about the acting methods of his time. Despite resistance from Rossellini, Bergman pursued other projects, including a film with Jean Renoir and a stage production, possibly engaging in an affair with the playwright. Alexander Granach, along with his first wife Martha Gutman, welcomed a son named Gerhard in 1915. Gerhard, later known as Gad Grunach, moved to Haifa in 1936 and resided in Jerusalem until his passing on January 6, 2011. Ingrid Bergman's co-star in Goodbye Again, Anthony Perkins, was informed by friends about Bergman's attraction to him during the film's production. This led to Perkins insisting on never being alone with her during love scene rehearsals, given his overwhelming fear of girls. Gary Cooper, a close friend of Ernest Hemingway, sparked speculation about Hemingway's potential latent homosexual tendencies. While Hemingway scholars dismiss any active homosexuality on Hemingway's part, there is intrigue in Hemingway's admiration for Cooper's masculinity. Some suggest that, in Hemingway's mind, there might have been a sexual affection for Cooper, though Cooper remained oblivious to it. Gary Cooper has appeared in seven films recognized by the National Film Registry. These films include Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ, It Wings, Morocco, Sergeant York, Ball of Fire, and High Noon. Ingrid Bergman, despite her European origins, had close relatives in the United States. She maintained contact with her Aunt Blenda, Blenda's son Carl, and Carl's son Norman. Ingrid and Norman corresponded through letters and met in various locations across the USA, France, and England. 
A tribute titled Ingrid Bergman, a centennial celebration was organized by MoMA to honor Bergman's 100th birthday. The celebration showcased a selection of films from her 50-year career, introduced by her children Pia Lindstrom, Isabella Rossellini, and Ingrid Rossellini. It ran from August 29 to September 10, 2015. Amidst the world of film, in its twists and turns, some stories stand out for their resilience and determination. One such tale involves a renowned actress who, influenced by her co-star, made a significant decision regarding her personal life. Similarly, a beloved actor faced health hurdles but persisted to leave a mark with his final performance. Another actress encountered setbacks in a project due to unforeseen challenges. These incidents, though challenging, became pivotal moments in their respective journeys. In the world of movies, actors often have interesting connections and stories that add depth to Hollywood's history. For instance, there's this actress who starred alongside Rock Hudson in a few memorable films. Although Hudson played smaller roles, his talent blended well with hers, creating great chemistry on screen. Then there's another actor, Harry Cording, who appeared in 12 movies nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. While only one of these movies won, each nomination showed Cording's talent and versatility. And did you know that actor Gary Cooper is related to actress Brooke Shields? Cooper is actually her step-uncle, which means their family trees are connected through marriages and step relationships. It's fascinating how these connections enrich the stories of Hollywood. In the world of cinema, these relationships and collaborations add depth to Hollywood's history, weaving together a colorful narrative of the industry's past and present. In 1942, Gary Cooper parted ways with Samuel Goldwyn and Paramount, establishing his production company. By October 22, 1947, Cooper inked a deal with Warner Brothers, committing to films at a rate of $295,000 per picture. Meanwhile, Ingrid Bergman earned the fifth spot on Harper's and Queen's list of the world's 50 most alluring women. Topping the list were Audrey Hepburn, followed by Ava Gardner, Julie Christie, and Catherine Deneuve. Fast forward to April 16, 1958, when Gary Cooper sought cosmetic enhancements at the Manhattan Eye, Ear, and Throat Hospital. Under the hands of Dr. John Converse, a prominent plastic surgeon, the procedure included a full face lift. However, reports suggested that the outcome was not successful, leaving Cooper's visage notably altered. These events shed light on the personal and professional trajectories of two prominent figures in the film industry during that era. In an interview for the book written in stone making Cecil B. Demel's epic The Ten Commandments, Yvonne De Carlo discussed her role in the film. Her mother, inspired by actress Baby Peggy, named her after the screen star. Yakima Kanat's personal life, notably his marriage to Minnie Rice, is outlined in historical records. However, there is uncertainty surrounding his prior relationship with Helene Ross and Deerholt. Despite reports, there is no definitive evidence of their marriage. Yvonne De Carlo's connection to baby Peggy sheds light on her upbringing and the influence of Hollywood on her life. As these details surface, they offer glimpses into the lives of those involved in the production.